Hi all, I have another delightful game to show you of Leela Chess against the Mighty Fire Chess Engine. It's one of the top chess engines in the world. And if you remember in the past uh, previous chess comp, uh, championships, the Fire Engine was mopping up the lesser engines with uh, great frequency. So a really mighty competitor. D4 from Leela, we have Knight F6. C4, E6, Knight F3, B6, G3. So we're in Queen's Indian territory here. Bishop b7 here, both sides castle, knight c3, knight e4, keeping a lock down on that e4 square, queen c2, knight takes, queen takes, c5, this has all been seen before, quite a theoretical position, rook d1, d6, and now here a slightly unusual move played by Leela, but has been seen before, queen d3, very, very interesting indeed. Uh, quite often b3 is played here instead, and after bishop f6, bishop b2, this position is thought to be about even. So here, queen d3, what's the venom behind this move? Well, we see knight c6. And actually, Lena plays d5. You might be thinking, hold on a sec, isn't this a really vulnerable pawn? And with knight b4, isn't black double attacking that pawn? And has got a lot of pressure on d5. Has Lena overcommitted? Queen b1. It turns out here, tactically, this is fine. This is a fine thing to do. It sets a kind of tactical trap, really. Uh, on e takes d5, c takes, black cannot win this pawn. If, for example, bishop takes d5, then a3. And if the knight moves, then rook takes d5. Uh, just to put that on the board, the rook can take. And so... If bishop takes f3, the problem is here, bishop takes f3, looks at a8, picking up the exchange, and that will be favourable to white here. So if we look at knight takes d5 as well, there's the crafty knight retreat, which are difficult to see sometimes in one's own games, but this knight retreat here, if the knight had gone anywhere else, it would be like a target, for example, to taking. But by knight retreating here, exposing that attack, and that pinned piece to b7 black's in big trouble black would this is desperate and black is just losing material being a piece down so it's perfectly fine to establish this and with this advanced d5 central pawn it looks as though black is drifting into kind of an inferior pawn structure which you would normally get from say a modern benoni uh, and the problem with that, well, we're going to see bishop f6, this pawn is usually a great strategic target in the Benoni structures with this kind of manoeuvre. It's as if Leela's transposed into that kind of thematic pawn structure with that clear plan here. a3, knight a6, bishop f4 probing that pawn. Uh, we see rookie 8, e4. Knight c7, as though b5 might be on the cards, that's clamped down on. The knight goes back. Now knight d2, so this really thematic kind of plan you'd normally see in the Benoni to torture the d6 pawn. Now black reacts by bishop g5. In Benoni's usually g6, of course, and the bishop's being chattoed, so it's slightly more intact over here. But fundamentally, it looks as though... The characteristic of this pawn structure, d6 is vulnerable and white is often flooding the center quite often in Bologna type positions. Will that happen here? Bishop takes, knight c4. So that e5 break seems attractive at this early stage to prepare for. Rook a3, knight b4, we see rook e3. And this is a really elegant way of preparing for that really thematic e5 later. Bishop a6, f4, again putting things in gear for e5 later queen g4 b3 so yes the knight uh, had to be attended this just counter attack the queen first before protecting the knight queen d7 now queen c1 so any bishop takes c4 there is an option now not losing the a pawn queen takes c4 this is played f6 now h4 giving the idea that this f6 is kind of asking for a bit of punishment maybe if the white king goes to h2 there, there is possibilities of bishop h3 a6 king h2 
And the queen gets out of the way in advance of that sort of thing. Now e5 here, the thematic break is finally used. And you might think, oh, hold on a sec, is, is this really clear cut? Queen f8 was played, kind of passive. If black took, uh, d6 check this queen f7, for example. But let's have a look at f takes d6, queen f7. The problem is here, after queen e2, that e5 is being hammered. And it's actually difficult for black to do anything useful here. Uh, so, for example, there's also rook f1 on the cards, uh, potentially, as well. And d7 first. So there's all sorts of things here. It seems in this variation, for example, h6, this kind of thing is going to be an advantage to white if e5 drops. Uh, on rook f8, yeah, rook takes e5. Now you might also think, well, hold on, what about just queen f6 though? Okay, there is a crucial way of playing this on queen f6, which does hold up e5, which is rook f3. On queen h6 here, let's take this first, d7. And this is really interesting. The d pawn is combining with this kind of weakness of the first rank, believe it or not. After rook e7, we have check. And after queen e6, there's rook d f1, switching attention to f8. And this is very, very bad news for black, this position. Because after queen takes, there's rook f8 check crashing through. That d pawn is crashing through. And white's a queen up. So it seems queen f6 is just not holding the position after rook f3. Another alternative here, for example, queen e6 bishop h3 queen h6 and we have the same kind of themes emerging d7 we have this theme of tapping into the back rank just in time with the possibility of queen c4 check if needed to make that back rank even worse if the king's first uh, put on h8 so here for example g5 there's queen f2 and actually yeah Let's have a look here. Knight c6, which seems to rescue the situation if there's no rook f8. But there's rook f7 instead. This is crushing. For example, here, rook f6, double attacking the queen and knight, winning material. So it seems black, whatever black does, it seems black's overloaded with the issues here, with the back row, with the d-pawn. And if the knight comes to rescue, the, the knight itself becomes quite quickly a tactical liability in this scenario just to recap that re f, rook f7 yeah rook f6 so yeah it seems as though queen f6 is not working here simply not working amazing stuff uh it's it's a really difficult position basically here okay so we see queen f8 which does allow potentially this e6 but it's not used here just yet rook d2 Rook d7, now rook e e2, and waiting for a bit, and now finally e6, committing to e6. Is this going to be in white's favour for sure? f5. Now you might find this f5 a bit surprising, because isn't that pawn hanging? Funny enough, black played king h8. On queen takes f5, the forcing move bishop h3 is very, very useful here. After queen h5, then another forcing move. And the wrath of the e pawn is evidenced after bishop d7, where white can either just take the exchange or be sadistic about it. Hitting the rook for a moment, okay, bit of bureaucracy, but now sadism with rook e6, instead of just taking the exchange, might be the best way to go. And taking out d6, and then eventually taking on e8 with a massive advantage. Indeed, two connected pass pawns in the center. So that's quite a penalty indeed for queen takes f5 here. And it doesn't make any difference, queen g6. The same mechanism, e7 and bishop d7. So very, very nice, uh, this move, f5. Yeah, incredible. King h8. Now we have rook f2, rook a8, queen c3, b5, a5. Just making sure that the black rooks are not active. Rook a7. And now the curious king h3, as though g4 is supported by the king himself. 
<laughs> getting involved in the middle game. Rook f8 is played. On rook a to a8, then, for example, this kind of thing is very, very nice with g5 potentially on the cards at some point. This looks like a fantastic position in any case, just visually crushing. So rook f8, for a moment, bishop e4. And the bishop is protecting both d5 and f5 here against that knight that sometimes could be a nuisance. Queen e8, and now g4. And what's really beautiful now is that Leela starts to build up for the g5 break. Okay, for the moment protecting the a pawn, but now things are starting to brew pretty soon for g5. The queen is stopping, is not now hitting a5. g5, queen goes back. But now the a pawn is, is left. It's getting a bit dangerous over on the g file, and it's it looks far too dangerous. Black actually played king g8 here. Queen c3, and there's definitely a lot of pressure now, which something needs to be done about. Knight a2, but what can black actually do? This seems very, very pointless. The queen is still on this very dangerous diagonal, coordinating very well with the rooks. There's huge pressure here for this g takes f6. Queen c3, king h8, rook g4. Now, you could say this is mega alignment on the g file, but it also has a bit of spice added to it. That spice being the double attack feature of chess, which that extra spice really sometimes makes a huge difference to results because it means that the opponent will have even more difficulties defending, not just against the explicit G file pressure, but we're going to see here, look at the queen. It's not just in the G file pressure, but on D6. What is the significance of this though, after queen E7? Isn't the defensive battery enough? Because also the queen is protecting D6. So you could say, isn't it the case of double defense? Rook G2, Rook B7. We have now G takes F6 though, Rook takes. And this is a really fantastic conception now. With this lovely triangle of pawns, but they seem blockaded, which seems the tragedy of the position. Can the tragedy of the position be addressed in any meaningful way here? It seems as though white really can't beef up the pressure now on the g-file. And the bishop is working hard to protect d5 as well. So how can white possibly make progress here? White play, if I let you pause the video for five seconds, I'll give you five seconds to pause the video. What would you play in this position? Okay, this build up really takes me back to a game I watched the, the Super Grandmaster Adams when he was on the way up. I, I just enjoyed the way he was building up pressure behind pawn breaks, by the way. So it's literally taken me back to years back observing a very high level game but here yeah we have that picture of alignment but with that spice which i think really needs to be uh emphasized because it's that spice which is the basis for this brilliant rook sack rook takes g7 instagram this position guys hash kc chess hash kings crusher hash leela hash ai beautiful rook sacrifice this means that these pawns the tragedy is that the blockade can actually be lifted on both the d pawn and the f pawn potentially now because after queen takes queen takes d6 a full rook sack leaving free connected past pawns queen f8 queen takes f8 not minding at all now being a rook down just for the moment because after d6 that material is about to be one with extra interest back this desperate looking uh, counter rook sack to stop the avalanche of pawns here with e7 and f6 and then f7's on the way so very very desperate it's it's difficult to i'll give you the the rooks attacked for example here e7 f6 and you can see that f7 on the way is not very happy for black under many circumstances here for example for example like this crashing through with checkmate so yes, this is an offering to stave off the connected past pawns for a moment, but it's a lost position actually now. One pawn extra, one, two, three, four, five, 
four is enough here. This D pawn is now threatening immediately D7. The knight's stranded at the moment. Can't move anywhere useful. It's only the rook that can try and stop the pawn. It has to blockade. Now F6 cuts the king. King J. Now this king comes to the rescue with king F5, just in case the king's got any intention of coming to E6. King F7, there's king F5. So C4, very desperate. Black is kind of paralyzed here. That knight can't move. So this is just taken. If king F7 as an alternative, king F5 and then king E6, this is just dreadful. What, what's happening here? Black's just, uh, this position is amusing, by the way, this variation where white can play just in time, rook c4 and then rook c8 not minding about the pawn queening because that would be checkmate let's put that on the board for aesthetic effect checkmate so absolutely beautiful stuff here c4 this is just desperate in a totally paralyzed position rook d4 the knight is offered now there's nothing much else to do so now a bishop up the rest is kind of technique as they say but let's see if Leela has some amusement for us. So King E6 offering the rook. Now offering that pawn and just still transposing into a totally one. <laughs> under promoting a rook. A totally one end game because the king's too far away to stop this A pawn. Can't get in the corner on this one. On this A pawn. So now rounding up King for the final checkmate here so another truly fantastic instructive strategic masterpiece and the golden lesson if i think to remember from this game for me personally is alignment is not enough remember to spice up your alignment with an element of double attack uh, which can potentially lead to a fantastic rook sacrifice giving you free connected past pawns and even if there's a counter rook sacrifice it's still winning for you i think that's the big lesson to be learned from this ultra fantastic super dynamic wonderful game if you enjoyed this game as much as me uh please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis in advance of games like this or the updated analysis from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order uh, okay, so comments, questions, donations, see the description. Uh, like, share, subscribe with the not notification bell. All really appreciated. Thanks very much.